Our Bible word is 1 Chronicles 28 verse 10. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. So 1 Chronicles, actually 1 and 2 Chronicles is originally one book. But in the Septuagint, that is the Greek translation of the Old Testament, they became two books. So 1 and 2 Chronicles, they come from the same time period. They were written by the same author or authors if more than one contributed towards it. And the dating of 1 Chronicles, we're not certain about this, but some were dated to around 350 to 300 BC. Others say it's maybe dates to about 450 BC. But it dates to after the time of the exile and after the time period when the temple was rebuilt. Remember, the Babylonians destroyed the temple in 587, 586 BC. And then Cyrus, the Persian, he allowed the, the Jewish people to return to their homeland from exile. And he also gave permission for the temple to be rebuilt. And we actually find a reference to Cyrus, the Persian, right at the end of 2 Chronicles. And those few verses are exactly the same what we encounter in Ezra. So some even say that maybe the author of Chronicles, 1 and 2 Chronicles, was Ezra. But of course we, we cannot know about this. Also for Chronicles 1 and 2 Chronicles, the author used many sources, some that we know of. Because parts of Samuel and Kings... Also the Psalms 95, 96, 105 and 106 and also some material from Nehemiah 11 and also material genealogies that we find in Genesis is found in 1 and 2 Chronicles. So he uses other parts of the Old Testament as his sources. And the reason why we also date this book to roughly 450 BC or even after that is because it lists the initial chapters lists many gene genealogies but among them is the line of David and after the time of King Joachim who was in exile to Babylon in 597 BC there's mention is made of seven generations and that works up to about 500 BC so there's, lots, there's a very strong emphasis in this book on the line of David. Because in this book, David and Solomon, they receive prominence. David was the one that organized or prepared the construction for, for the temple. David was the one to whom God has revealed the plans for the temple, how to organize the temple. And David... Unfortunately, you could not build the temple because it says there because you shed too much blood. So your son Solomon will build the temple. But David is a key figure here. And maybe this book was also written because it hoped for the restoration of the line of David. Because for the author, it's the king. He's the one who's responsible for the temple. For the organization of the temple. And if the king is righteous and good, the temple will function properly. Then the people will be blessed, etc. But if the king is disobedient, then that's where things go wrong. So this is a very important theme. So true worship of God through the temple is dependent on a godly kingship. That the kings obey God, etc. And for the author, this goes all the way back to David. Because he's the one that instituted all these arrangements and the temple itself. So, if you look at the structure of Chronicles. Firstly, there are genealogies. That's in 1 Chronicles chapters 1 to 9. And that's where we also find this genealogy of the line of David. And then it moves over to the reigns of David. That's chapter 10 to 29. And then in 2 Chronicles, chapters 1 to 9, 
that is where it focuses on the reign of Solomon and the actual building of the temple. And then 2 Chronicles 10 or chapters 10 to 36 is that focuses on the story of the divided kingdom. In other words, after King Solomon died, his, his kingdom split into two, the northern kingdom of Israel and the southern kingdom of Judah. And also what the kings did at this time, their righteous and their unrighteous conduct, etc. Now some themes that are important for the author of Chronicles is that God is active in history, especially in the history of Israel. So the, the faithfulness or the sins of the kings are immediately rewarded or punished by God. But this activity of God in Israel is also important because this is about connecting the present situation of the people all the way back to David and Solomon at the time when the temple was built. Because for this community or the author, God's people, it's a temple orientated community. The temple is important because that's where we experience God and His presence. The second theme is that God calls Israel to a special relationship. So from all the people in the world, He elected Israel. And the true Israel are those who continue to worship God at the temple in Jerusalem. Another theme is that God has chosen David and his dynasty as the agents of his will. David was the one who brought the Ark of the Covenant to Jerusalem. David was the one that arranged for the temple to be built or the preparations being made. And this dynasty of David was supposed to last forever. And they were supposed to look after the temple that it is properly run, etc., into the future. The next theme is that God chose the temple in Jerusalem as the place where it should be worshipped. Again, the focus is on the construction of the temple. All the rituals that must be conducted in the temple. The Levites and the priests the various orders that David established to run the various functions of the temple. In this way, the author also emphasizes our temple, yeah, it's rebuilt. It's also important. This rebuilt temple wasn't as grand as the temple of Solomon. There were many financial difficulties, etc. But at least it was rebuilt. Maybe an inferior version, not up to the former glory it had, at the time of Solomon, but it was there. And for the author, it says, we have this temple. And this is important because this is where God must be worshipped here in Jerusalem. So those are the themes. It's about the temple. It's about David. Maybe there was this hope that the line of David will be restored. Because the temple, proper worship through the temple is dependent on the dynasty of David. On proper kingship and righteous kings that will reign over Israel. Now our immediate textual unit is chapters 28 to 29. And these can be described as the final words of David. Because he's already in chapter 3, or sorry, chapter 23, he assembled the people. He's called them and he's given them now his instructions for the temple, etc. And if you want to date this, this dates to about 970 BC. This was now the time period when King David also died. And this, if you go there and read chapter 23 verses 27, it concerns the last instructions of David. So King David also, he called on his son to build the temple. But let's go to chapter 17 first because there... David expresses his wish. If we go to chapter 17 verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass, when David was dwelling in his house, that David said to Nathan the prophet, See now, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under tent curtains. So David had this wish. He wants to build this temple. But of course, God also told him, You can't because you shed blood. Your son must build it. 
And now if we go to chapter 22, let's go to verse 6. There it says, Then he, that's David, called for his son Solomon and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. So already there's David. My son Solomon, you must build the temple. And then in chapters 23 to 26, David explains how the Levites and the priests must be organized and do their work. And now from chapter 28, basically what we find is a continuation of this that already begins from chapter 23 or from chapter 22 even. It's about David's last instructions. But now really it's the last words of David, so to speak. And he gives his instructions to the people. And he's assembled the people. If you go read there at the beginning of chapter 28. So if you go to chapter 28 verses 2 to 8. Is where he encourages the people. And then he also encourages his son Solomon. That's in verses 9 to 10. To build the temple. And it also David tells Solomon, I have the plans of the temple. I've received it. And that's recounted in verses 11 to 19. And of course, he gives encouragement for the work that lays ahead. And he also urged Israel or the people, give for the temple. That's in chapter 29, verses 1 to 5. And they responded and they gave from what they had. And there David also praised God. And also for express thankfulness for the people giving and offering to the temple. Gold and silver, etc. And then eventually, King Solomon was by a second ceremony anointed as king. And then David passes away. And that we find in chapters 22 to 30. So if we go to verses, verse 1. Now David assembled at Jerusalem all the leaders of Israel, the officers of the tribes and the captains of the divisions who served the king, the captains over thousands and captains over hundreds, and the stewards over all the substance and possessions of the king and of his sons, with all the officials, the valiant men, and all the mighty men of valor. And of course, then he goes on, verses 2 that hear me my brethren and my people I had in my heart to build a house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God so this is about building a special place especially for the ark of the covenant because that way God was present in a special way that was God's footstool so to speak and that's where also atonement was made in verses 3 David says but God said to me, you shall not build a house for my name, because you have been a man of war and have shed blood. Then of course, verses, verses 10, that's our Bible word. It says, consider now, for the Lord has chosen you, that's not David speaking to Solomon, to build a house for the sanctuary. Be strong and do it. And we find similar words also, in verses 20, And David said to his son Solomon, Be strong and of good courage, and do it. Do not fear nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, my God, will be with you, and he will not leave you nor forsake you, until you have finished all the work for the service of the house of the Lord. Of course, interspersed here is also David telling his son, Remain faithful to God. Observe or keep, keep his will, be obedient to him. Unfortunately, as things turned out, King Solomon wasn't obedient to God because he also engaged in idolatry due to all the wives that he married eventually. But now this book, it refers back to this glorious time period where King David, the big and great organizer, the king who established or prepared the way for the temple that was eventually built through his son, this was a glorious time period. So this community for it was written for. Yeah, roughly 350 or 300 BC or so. They connect their own present time. Their 
temple focused worship to this great time of the past when the temple was actually built.